Java is a very popular object-oriented programming language. What does that mean? What are the object-oriented programming or OOP concepts? We started off with the object-oriented concept of abstraction in my last video, Java Object-Oriented Concepts Abstraction. In this video, we will understand encapsulation. In the real world, we think in terms of objects. Real objects like cars, phones, tables, chairs, etc. Each object solves a problem. Cars help with transportation. We sit on chairs, place things on tables, etc. In object-oriented programming, we similarly think in terms of objects and solve problems using objects. So what is an object? Any object is comprised of attributes and behaviors. For example, the car object has attributes like color, combustion engine, mileage, odometer display, etc. Then the car also has behavior or methods. So press the accelerator to go faster, press the brakes to stop, turn the ignition key to start, etc. So each object is comprised of attributes and methods. You interact with the object using the behavior or methods. The principle of encapsulation is comprised of two things. First, the object with its attributes and behavior is encapsulated as one entity. It is a single entity. You interact with the object as a whole using its methods. The second aspect of encapsulation is data hiding. So the idea is to provide control to the object to allow or not allow access to its attributes. And if it allows access, whether it is a read-only access or both read and write access. Let's see how it's accomplished. So let's take the attribute combustion engine. Now the car internally uses the combustion engine for its working, but to a driver of the car, you do not want to provide access to it, so no read or write access should be provided. So here is the car's object. You declare this attribute as private. Declaring it as private hides it from outside objects or classes, and it is only the internal methods of the class which have access to it. We have assigned it a value gasoline. Let's take the attribute mileage. The mileage is internally calculated and you might want to provide the user that information. So the user can read the mileage of the car but obviously cannot modify it. To achieve it, you declare the mileage as private. We have given it a value of 40. Now create a public getter method. A public method can be called by anyone, by another class or consumer to get its value. This method is called the getter method. So here, the definition of the method would be public int get mileage. So this method returns an int value and inside you return the current mileage. So a consumer would call get mileage public method and the car will return the mileage. Let's take another attribute, odometer display. Let's say this attribute allows the user to set whether the user wants to see the odometer value in miles or kilometer. Let's give it an initial value of miles. So you want to give access to a calling class to both read the value as well as write to it or change its value from miles to kilometer or vice versa. You would achieve that by creating both a getter method and a setter method. Again, you would declare the attribute as private, create getter method, public string, get odometer display, and inside we return its current value, which by default is set to miles. Now to enable a user to change this variable, you would create a setter method, which would be public set odometer display, which takes in a string value of display type, and inside you assign the odometer display variable to the past value miles or kilometer. Again, both the getter and setter methods are public so that they can be called by outside classes. Let's now see it in action. Here, I'm running Spring Tool Suite, a flavor of Eclipse, but you can download and use any IDE you want. You can even use Notepad to write Java programs, but an IDE makes it very easy. So let me click New Java Project. Let's give this project a name, Encapsulation Project. Click finish. Now here is the project. 
Expanding it, we see the source folder. Let's right click and choose new class. Give it a name car. Click finish. Inside, let's create first a few attributes and we will keep all the attributes as private. So private string combustion engine, say having a value of gasoline. Let's create another private attribute, private int mileage. Let's assign it a value of 40 miles per gallon. Now of course, a car internally would calculate it based on usage, but to keep it simple, we have given it a value. Finally, let's create private string odometer display and assign it a default value of miles. Since we do not want external user or calling class to have access to combustion engine, we would not create a getter or setter method for it. For mileage, we do want the user to be able to read the value, so we create public getter method public int get mileage, which returns the mileage attribute. For odometer display, we want to provide both read and write access. So let's create a getter method for read. So public string get odometer display, which returns the odometer display. For the setter or the write method, let's create public void as this method would not return anything. Set odometer display, which takes in the string display type and then we assign the odometer display the past value of display type. Note the convention for both the getter and setter methods is lowercase get and set and then make the first letter in capital case and then the remaining attribute name. To test this, let's create a tester class. Let's right click and choose new class, call it tester. Inside, let's create a public static void main string args method. Now this is a method which the Java runtime would call. It creates a main method within the Java application. It is a core method of the program and calls all others. It can't return values and accepts parameters for complex command line processing. Inside, now let's create a variable of type car, call it car and initialize it as new car. So this car object encapsulates all the attributes and methods of a car. Let's get the mileage and display it to the console by typing system out print line mileage is and concatenate or attach the mileage by using the plus sign and calling car.getMileage. Note the IDE has IntelliSense and there is no get or set method for the combustion engine so it's totally hidden. Also there is no set method for the mileage so we cannot set it. Let's have another system out print line and type odometer display type is car dot get odometer display. Next, let's set the odometer display as car dot set odometer display as kilometers. Let's do another system out print line to see now the value of the odometer display type. So the end user can both read and write to odometer display. Let's run this class by right clicking and choosing run as Java application and we see the mileage value of 40. The initial value of odometer display is read as miles and then once we write to it, it displays it as kilometers. So we have achieved appropriate data hiding as per our requirements. In this video, we looked at the concept of encapsulation which involves wrapping up all the attributes and methods of an object as a single entity as well as data hiding which is achieved by declaring the variables as private and creating appropriate getter and setter methods which are public. Thanks for watching.